My name is Michał Kosiński. I'm a computational psychologist and work at the uh, Stanford University Computer Science Department. Well, I started as a psychometrician when psychometricians are interested in measuring psychological traits uh, of people yeah. using psychological questionnaires or tests. And we quickly realized that now uh, in the, uh, uh, we have such an abundance of digital footprint. So each one of us is leaving a lot of information behind, uh, behind when using internet that maybe really asking you questions doesn't make sense anymore. Where in the situation in which you can simply uh, go to someone's online profile and get all the answers you're looking for and use those answers to measure personality, intelligence and many other psychological traits. Right. I also think that one of the important parts of my research is that it's pretty creepy and I actually want to stress that. I think that many of the things that we show uh, one can do uh, they should certainly not be done by corporations or governments without users' consent. So I think that the important part of my research is that it's creepy and we should really watch out for companies doing too much of it. We increasingly record everything we do, right? We use uh, smartwatches, uh, smartphones, computers, all of our interactions are now being mediated through digital products and services, which basically means that everything is being recorded. And it might be that your financial operations will be most predictive of your financial um, aspects of your life, whereas mm -hmm. your entertainment preferences will be most predictive of entertainment preferences. Mm -hmm. But most likely, uh, your profile uh, will work very nicely across the context. I hope, you know, maybe other future generations of researchers would study my digital footprint and, uh, and, uh, and infer my personality based on it. Well, I think this is a splendid idea. Uh, you can let people, um, uh, you, can, you can save a lot of time and, and protect privacy on one hand, but on the other hand, you can bring benefits of psychological assessment to large groups of people and spread this, uh, those benefits to many places where they were not used so far, like product recommendations, uh, marketing, uh, property markets, and so on. It's actually now pretty well understood that we are retrieving actual personality of the person from their Facebook likes. It is relatively easy to misrepresent yourself or try to sell kind of idealized image when you are filling a personality questionnaire, right? You need to focus for a few minutes. Uh, questions are very often uh, quite obvious, which means that in some contexts, really, personality questionnaire becomes an IQ test, right? If you think about occupational markets, mm -hmm. uh, the one uh, that is able to uh, to adjust their responses the, the, uh, in a, the most appropriate way to the needs of the or perceived needs mm -hmm. of the employer will have the perfect score, which actually results in a bit of a cheating contest where people who are li less least honest and most intelligent have uh, have have a great advantage. Being able to run this assessment based on uh, your digital footprint to a large extent solves this problem. If you can appear to be extroverted consistently for seven years, last seven years... You might want be one. Exactly. Yeah. You just as well probably uh, are an extrovert. Mm -hmm. Well, you very often get, uh, um, get accused of studying something that is silly and irrelevant. Uh, research, uh, researchers and academics very often they don't even use Facebook because you know, they are way too important um, for that. So they obviously also don't really realize that for 1.4 billion active Facebook users, this is a really important environment, really important platform that actually is also pretty amazing. It solves many problems, it allows people to socialize in a very uh, efficient way 
And it seems that because we basically like it so much and use it so much, we leave enough digital footprint for this platform to uh, create a very accurate image of ourselves. Academics think that Facebook is basically not a very serious uh, uh, subject of research. I think increasingly so. It's increasingly uh, accepted. But at the beginning, when I started four or five years ago, um, academics were uh, convinced that this is just complete waste of time and you should uh, you know, go to hospital and study patients mm -hmm. there, which is also obviously very important. But I believe that uh, Facebook has become another digital environment. They have become such an important part of human life that you cannot afford not to study it. But I would say that the same relates to other uh, shunned environments, let's say porn websites, mm -hmm. which attract uh, 50 or 40 percent of online traffic, yeah. yet we have no understanding what's going on there. We don't know whether it's harming people or maybe helping people. We don't know whether it's changing relationships between uh, romantic partners or not, but it's affecting our youngsters mm -hmm. whom whatever parents believe you cannot stop them from accessing this content full stop. Like the, the, the motivation they have to watch porn is much higher than motiv it's much higher than parents' motivation to stop them. Oh, yes. And also they are much smarter in terms of using technology. Mm -hmm. Yet you can and actually this is a scientific this is a fact. You cannot study anything related to porn at the university because you will immediately uh, be ostracized, you will lose your job, you will never publish it. This prevents us from understanding not a niche thing again. 60% of online traffic mm -hmm. is porn. Yeah. If aliens have descended on Earth, they would basically consider the internet just a, a big porn database because the rest of the things we do with it, banking, emailing and whatnot, is just kind of a small niche activity. Yet, yeah, no one is studying it or understanding it. Facebook, uh, Snapchat, uh, Microsoft, Google and whatnot, they have access to data that scientists would not be able to collect ever. Mm -hmm. And then the thing is that, uh, they, they, first of all, they're using it, they're running experiments. They would not share this information with the general public, not because they're evil, because the general public is bloody stupid, I'm sorry to say. As a, as a society, we lost an ability to convince large companies that have enormous budgets and enormous access to data to share this goodness with us. Mm -hmm. Since then, the person who ran uh, this study, he is no longer doing research. Facebook is no longer willing to share the data with external researchers. Uh, uh, they reduced their data science team and whatnot. We basically caused a lot of damage to ourselves and I think we should basically grow up finally and stop it. I think this uh, is a bit of a nature versus uh, nurture discourse mm -hmm. here, right? We're born with certain preferences and potential. Mm -hmm. Some people are born with preference for mathematical issues. Some people are born with a more kind of artsy uh, uh, potential. As we do in our offline lives, right? We become a lawyer, so now we behave like a lawyer. We try to treat other people like lawyer. We try to follow occupational ethics and whatnot. I think that the same relates to other environments like liking on Facebook. I believe in given idea, I will join a group that discusses this idea, I will like it on Facebook, and now perhaps this would help me to amplify uh, my personality or my other traits, which in a way you could really call it will help me to find myself, to discover myself, to discover what's, um, what's good for me, what I like, which has, and, and I would say it's kind of unmeasurable advantages to humankind. 50 years ago, if you were gay, you probably thought, oh my god, I'm such a weirdo and everyone was prejudiced against you and uh, you, had, uh, you had no choice but to assume that it's, something is wrong with you. Okay. Today, you can find many more people more like you, which provides you with personal benefits. You start, you validate yourself, okay. but also provides, you, provides community with benefits, where community realizes that all the weirdos or criminals from the past are actually just healthy and uh, very valuable parts of our community. Okay.